I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again. He will lift up Jesus Delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye. Don't respond to all those emissaries of Job. Don't let there be any royalty. Walk as children of light. And then he also talks about drunkenness. When he talks about drunkenness, it's not only alcohol. Ideas can make you drunken. An opinion. You can become drunk of an opinion that will become you are beside yourself. That you are not able to act normal anymore because you are drunk with that opinion. Not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Not in strife. It's the work of darkness. Let us cast off the works of darkness and then put on the armor of light. What's the armor of light? It's in verse 13. Let us walk. Honestly, every believer experiences a radical change, a radical transformation from darkness to light. What a transformation that is. We reflect the light of Christ. Number one, light penetrates and eliminates darkness. You see, when you become a child of God, and this light of the gospel is in you, the light in you will eliminate darkness by penetrating into your community. Number two, light enlightens and enlarges a person's vision and knowledge of an area. You are in an area and there's no light there. You will not know, you will not have knowledge of all the things that are there. But when the light comes, then that light will enlarge your vision and will enlighten you to be able to see everything around. Be a, be a light. That when you are in a particular community, the holiness they didn't see before, the gentleness they didn't see before, and the, the lifestyle they have not known before, through you, because you are light, you will be able to see. Number three, light reveals and opens up the truth. Light reveals and opens up the truth of an area and clears up the way to the truth. When you are light, you clear the way for people to, oh, this is the true thing. And then your life will point to that truth. Number four, light guides and directs the way you go and leads along the right path. Light guides and directs the way you go and leads along the right path. Number five, light differentiates between the right way and the wrong way. You wouldn't know the right way or the right or the wrong way if the light didn't shine on your path when you are at a crossroad. If you didn't if the sign bush directing you to this is what this place will lead to, that's what that place will lead to. If there was no light to read all those signs, you wouldn't know the way to take. Be a light. And let your light guide people in the right direction. Number six, light warns us of the dangers that lie ahead. A perfect path. If there's a ditch in front, it's the light that makes you to see that. If there is any danger, something that could destroy your life, is a light that makes you to see that. And your life shall be light unto people. So that your life will be a sign of warning to them. So that through your life, they will see the dangers ahead. Number seven, light protects a person from the dangers of darkness, from stumbling, from falling, from injuring himself. Ye are the light of the world. Number two, radiant Christian living. Matthew chapter 5 again. In Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 14, the second part of verse 14. A city that is set on an hill cannot be healed. A city that is set on an hill 
cannot be. Everybody from every direction will be able to look up at that city set on a hill. Because it is not hidden. And that's what the Christian ought to be. That your life ought to be a radiant life. A plain life. A clear life. That other people can see and they can light their little candles from your light. And they can, sh they can go the right direction of the way the Lord is leading you in life. That you will be like that city that is set on a hill. And then your life is full, influential on other people. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 35. He was a burning and a shining light. That's John the Baptist. He was a burning and a shining light. And you were willing for a season to rejoice in his life. Our lives should so influence people that they will rejoice to take after us. They will rejoice to live like we live. They will rejoice to follow our footsteps. Burning light, a shining light. Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. Reading from verse 13 all through to verse 17. Job 11 verse 13. If thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thine hands toward him, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. For then shalt thou lift up thine face without sport. Yea, Thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear, because thou shalt forget thy misery, and remember it as waters that pass away, and thine age shall be clearer than the noonday, and thou shalt shine forth, and thou shalt be as the morning. You see, when you get rid of sin in your life, and the blood of Jesus washes you and cleanses you, and puts your feet in a new direction, a new path, it says now that your age will be clearer than the noonday. That is the light shining in the mid midday. And thou shalt shine forth. And thou shalt be as the morning. I pray it will happen to you. That your life now will be lived for the light of the gospel. And that light of the gospel will influence other people around you. You will be holding forth the word of life in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 verse 14. Philippians 2, verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Do all things without murmurings and disputing. What does that mean? I'm sure you know what that means. Whatever you are doing in the church, you ask fellowship leader, do it without murmuring, do it without disputing, do it without debate, do it without fighting, do it without struggling. If you are in the children church section, do what you are doing without disputing and without murmuring and without debate, without struggling with the leadership in the church. If you are in the youth ministry, do everything you do with a free mind that you just love the Lord and you love the youth ministry and you are, there's no disputing, there's no murmuring and there's no aggressive kind of debate. And there's no struggling with the leadership in the church. Do everything without murmuring, without disputing. What's your mind? What's your heart? And help us to lead these young people, this young mind, into the light. And if you're leading them into the light, you're leading them to live a sincere life, an honest life. You're not teaching them to riot. When I say riot, you need to understand, routing takes many forms. Routing is not just when you carry banners and carry posters and carry sticks. You know, there are people, have you heard of, you know, workers that just sit down at home? They don't fight. Just a sit down strike. Have you heard of prisoners that will not eat and they go on hunger strike? They don't fight. And they don't carry placards, but they just sit down. And they don't eat anything. And they just want to register their opinion, whatever they want, to the ruling body. Don't do that. 
Don't do that. And don't teach the young people either to do that. You know, to teach in a particular way or to stand in a particular way or to make some signs. Don't teach these young people. Life of darkness is the way of the world. It says in verse 14, do all things without murmurings and without disputings that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Among whom ye shine, ye shine as lights in the world. You know, see all these uh, lights here? Look up for a moment, look up, look up. Have you seen the light? You know, I, I'm so impressed about these lights. If we said we're starting at 6.30 in the morning, you know the lights are on. If we change our mind, and then instead of starting at 6.30, we start at 7, all these lights, they just keep on there, just shining. That's just their duty. You can change your mind, you can change your program, you can alter everything. You may say you want to eat now, you may say you want to pray now, you may say you want to do any other thing, or whatever you want to do. Here we are, we are at your service, not to shine. That's the life of the child of God. You are in the church. I'll say, Lord, I surrender my talent. I surrender my skill. I surrender everything that I have. I'm here as light to shine. They remove this ball and they put it here. No grudges. Get there and shine. They remove you from there. They take you to the kitchen. That ball, get there and shine. They remove you from the kitchen, they take you to the hostel, no problem, go there and shine silently without any struggle, without any, mom, without any debate, without any disputing, that's light. And it is as we shine like that, and we're shining in this world, and we do not mind about position, about office, about whether they change program, or they change leadership, or whatever it is, just shine in verse 16, holding forth. The word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Just keep on shining. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Reading from verse 5. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Let us swerve the day. Be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. And helmet the hope of salvation. First John chapter 1, verse 5. First John chapter 1, reading from verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. What does that mean to walk in darkness? It means to cover yourself with darkness and you live in secrecy. Let's say, for example, those of us who are men here, we're together. And those of you who are married, that's great, that's wonderful. And for a man to walk in darkness, is for a man to, you may be doing something, it may not even be sinful, what you are doing. But you keep it away from your wife, that's walking in darkness. You call your sister in the fellowship, and not that you want to, but we're not even talking about sin. We're not talking about adultery, we're not talking about fornication. We're not talking about any bad thing at all. But, uh, dear sister, come. I see that you have financial problem. Now, please, I want to give you this amount of money. My mind is clear. I don't want. To, I'm not asking for anything, any favor, anything from you. I just want to help you. But please, if uh, my wife happens to discuss with you, don't ever open your mouth to tell my wife. Don't tell my wife. This is just between me and you. No sin, no fornication. But you're walking in darkness. 
Why wouldn't your wife know if you're walking in the light? Why wouldn't your wife be able to be party to it? That's a woman. And you're giving the money that belongs to the family to that woman. Why wouldn't your wife know? Don't walk in darkness. Make everything plain. Are you afraid you cannot convince your wife? If you told her, will she so disagree with you? And you don't have a way of convincing one another, my wife can't. This particular sister, I think we should help her. She needs money. She needs her help. Even if your wife will say no, you are the man. You should be able to intelligently talk to your wife. Say, ah, my wife, why are you saying no? You know, I could have done this without telling you, but if I did that, I'd be walking in darkness. But I'm going to tell you, this is the reason why, this is the reason why, this is the reason why. And actually, I'm telling you because I don't want to give the money to her myself. This is the money, please. You are a woman. Give it to her as a woman. That's walking in the light. When there is no secrecy, when there's nothing hidden, there's no hidden agenda, and everything is very plain, that's how we are to live our lives. Isn't that a peaceful life? And you have not said done anything, and then you, have, you, you see the woman, maybe the, other, the following week talking to your wife, and you are passing by. What are they talking about? Is she telling my wife? What's my wife asking her? You will not have all that kind of troubled mind if everything was in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. If you hear anything about your leader, walk in the light. Come to your leader. Go to your leader, to your state overseer. Don't, don't do all these, uh, you know, backhanded kind of thing. That's walking in darkness. You know, come here. This, our region overseer, is a bad person. Why are you telling another person? Go and tell the overseer yourself. But you know, I don't want to get involved. But you know, you need to write to Lagos headquarters and tell the GS, what will I write? You don't know he's a bad man. No, he's our pastor now. I enjoy his messages. In fact, the other day when he, when he preached, I cried like a baby. And I saw the face of this. Shut up. Cry like a baby how? This man. See, he does this, does this, does this. Then you change his mind to convince him that his pastor, who is the only one that can lead him to heaven, you change his mind to hate his pastor. And then you tell him, this is what to write. And then he writes to Lagos. And you stay at the background, in the dark. And then you push the other people. They are the people to do the writing. You are walking in darkness. If you say you are in the light, walk in the light. If you know anything wrong, go to your overseer, go to your pastor. And say with all respect, sir, it looks like, you know, you are forgetting our need. The way you are preaching our days, it's like, you know, you are fighting with us and this and that. Lay it very plain before that overseer. That's walking in the light. And if you are going to write at all to Lagos, you will write, you will make a copy, you will not post it to your overseer, you will go directly to your state overseer and or, the, or the regional overseer pastor. You know, I've come here to you before and I told you this and this and it looks like because I am too small and you can't understand me. Now, I'm preaching to our father in the Lord in Lagos. This is a copy of what I wrote. If, they, if, my, if our father in the Lord in Lagos, if he calls you and he said somebody write, Sir, it is me that wrote and this is a copy of what I wrote. 